Hey everybody, welcome to Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. My name is Reed with Best Me Videos. We are a wedding videography company based out of West Seattle, Washington, and I'm excited to be joined today online um, with a new friend based out of Portland, Kevin Wise with KW Events. Uh, he's a DJ, MC, and um, just really appreciate you taking the time, kind of going back and forth and getting this scheduled and uh, getting everything underway here. So why don't you introduce yourself, tell us who you are and a little bit about what you do. Okay. Well, my name is Kevin Wise, as you said. I uh, I own and operate events by K-Dub. Um, I am a DJ, MC, and also I have recently added officiating to my list. Um, I am a single proprietor, so if you hire me, you get me. And that's, uh, that's kind of it in a, a nutshell. Uh, and you've been doing this a long time, right? Talk about how many years you've been doing weddings and, you know, estimate how many and uh, you've been doing this for a long time. Well, I, uh, uh it, it sounds crazy, but I've been involved in weddings for about 40 years. Uh, the majority of that was when it, in wedding bands as a musician, um, Oh, in the last five years, I actually retired from my day job of my friend, my kids as friends, all got to the age where they were getting married and they knew that I had equipment. So they said, Hey, get your dad to DJ our wedding. And that's where it took off. And now I am doing 50 to 60 weddings a year. Uh, I've been very blessed. I've got great clientele, love what I do. And, uh, I think one of the selling features for me is, uh, this isn't my living. I have a, a very, very good background as far as investments and my previous job. So uh, <clears throat> I don't depend on this as my full income, I guess. So you're doing this for the love of kind of being involved in the wedding community, huh? That's exactly it. So uh, give me a little bit about your background. Are you from the area? Where did you grow up? And, and how did you kind of, you said you played in bands for a long time. How did you, how did all this kind of start? Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I've grown up in the Portland area. I've lived within a 25 mile radius my entire life. Um, as far as music, I'm a third generation professional musician, uh, played in my dad's bands. Um, my, my brother, my older brother was a big inspiration for me. So I followed his footsteps playing professionally. Um, I'm actually a retired truck driver and, uh, so I have a, a Teamster pension that I live on very comfortably. And so it's always been a sideline for me until five years ago. And I decided, you know, I'm going to pull the trigger. I quit my last band and uh, decided to devote myself full time to being a wedding DJ. Uh, and obviously kind of being involved in music and bands and, you know, you, you know a lot about crowds and kind of how to manage all that. Uh, what, what kinds of stuff did you like to play and, and how, where all did that kind of take you when you were doing that? Well, I, uh, I, I'm kind of a country classic rock musician. I've played several genres, but uh, that's been my staple. Um, I think you're right. Learning to read a crowd is huge. See, just paying attention to what people are reacting to is, is so important. Um, and, and, you know, to be quite frank, dealing with drunk people, that's, that's an art in itself. So, you know, being able to be patient and not just tell some guy to get lost because he's being obnoxious to, you know, learning how to deal with people like that, I think is a, a pretty big factor in dealing with crowds. Um, a, a life as a truck driver, that's got to be difficult, huh? You know, it, it was, uh, it's not my favorite thing in the world. I kind of fell into it as a very young man and uh, it, it made a good living. I've got four grown children that are married. I've got eight grandchildren. I was able to support a family very comfortably doing it. So, and then again, I'd always played, um, performed on the weekends as a sideline. Cause it's gotta be kind of different, you know, the, the solitary life of kind of being on the road versus being in a band or now as a DJ, I mean, quite the, quite the dichotomy, right? It is a huge contrast to singing to the radio <laughs> by yourself for eight to 10 hours a day versus being in front of people. Uh, you have a lot of time to con con contemplate your, your next moves as far as, uh, you know, picking up new music. Uh, I, I, you know, basically learn songs as I was driving. So that was a, a plus. And then I also, the first few years, I was a beer truck driver. So I knew venues and I was able to book many, many venues because I had a relationship with owners of venues. 
So as a band, did you guys, I mean, you weren't, were you a wedding band? Probably not, or I don't know. So how did you, you know, going from being a band to kind of getting into the wedding world and, and kind of joining this? Well, I, I played in many wedding bands. Um, I, I've, I kind of consider myself a musical prostitute. If somebody wanted to pay me, I'd show up and play. So I, 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 been in countless bands through the years. Um, and uh, you know, the, the wedding thing is always been a nice staple. Uh, quite frankly, the money's better. Um, and it's usually a lot better atmosphere. I'm not a huge fan. I don't, I don't go to bars on my off time. So I, uh, I would rather be in that type of atmosphere. And what kinds of, uh, I know on your website, you have like a guitar and stuff. I mean, what kinds of, uh, was it always stringed instruments or what do you enjoy playing? Well, I started out at a very young age playing a ukulele in my dad's Hawaiian band. He was a Hawaiian steel guitar player. Um, I, my family needed a drummer, so I started playing drums. Um, and I'd always played guitar uh, on the side. And then my brother called me at a, I was still a teenager, I believe, and said, hey, my bass player just quit. Why don't you learn to play bass? So a week later, I was on stage playing bass with his band. And uh, the bass has always kind of been my staple. I get way more work playing bass than anything, but I do on occasion get hired to play lead guitar. Or, you know, I, I kind of hung up the drums a few years back. I still have a set, but I don't really play drums anymore. That's awesome. Uh, so w when you kind of started, you know, saying, Hey, I'm going to, you know, do the DJ thing. I've got some equipment. I mean, obviously you had kind of like played in weddings and stuff, but was that, were, were you nervous? Was that, was it weird? I mean, what was it like making that change? You know, it was, it was such a natural fit. I, uh, and, and realistically, one thing I have discovered through the years is uh, music is such a small part of what an actual wedding DJ does. Um, I, you know, I get to know my clientele. I always meet in person at least once. I want to know them. I tell them, I want to be your friend. I don't want to be some hired guy off the street. Um, I want to know your family names. Um, so important to have that personal connection with them. So I, at, at my age, um, I'm almost 60 years old and I become almost a counselor or a father figure to a lot of these brides who maybe have an absent, absent dad. So I build a really strong relationship with these people. I've, I've gained a lot of friendships through this journey. Um, I still keep in contact with a lot of them on my, in fact, I just made a post on my Facebook page last week about how many of my past brides are either new moms or expecting. And I had a bunch of them post their pictures. And I, I just think that's a wonderful thing. I, I really want to keep it always that personal with them. It's so interesting. Yeah. Just, you know, in the, in this later stage of your life to really feel like you're, doing something totally brand new again, you know, and something that you can be passionate about. Is it, is it nice to, to feel like this is your own thing now that you can really kind of grow and cultivate? I think that, uh, being able to do this at my age, it's such a perfect fit. And now that I've added the officiating, which I've done a couple of weddings that way, um, I think that's the direction I'm going to go with in the next, not, few years but i if i can squeeze 10 more years out of the dj thing and then move into that efficient part um i truly enjoy that again i get to build this relationship with these wonderful couples uh, it really makes it enjoyable for me what is it about the weddings that you enjoy so much you know my favorite part is at the end of the wedding when a bride and a groom walk up to me they give me hugs and say thank you there, there's nothing more gratifying to me than that you know of course you know the money part's great i i you know it, it helps um but it, it is just that that again that relationship i build with these people um th there's no substitute for it um what was it like transitioning into kind of the role of being the business owner and and having to kind of finagle all the, you know the facebook and the websites and there you know it's not something that that most people kind of deal with every day that is probably my least favorite part um as you've known communicating with me i am not exactly a tech savvy guy as quite probably a lot of people my age aren't we didn't grow up with computers in our school days um you know, I still do a lot of paper. I, uh, I actually mail contracts. Um, my questionnaire for my, my music questionnaire is on paper. 
um, along with, you know, inquiries for names and everything. I, I still do that type of thing. Um, again, I think it's personal. And I have found that a lot of the younger people are really appreciative and warm, warmed up to that quite a bit. Yeah. What is it like? Um, we talk a lot on the podcast. I mean, even, you know, I'm 33 and, you know, aging up and, and, you know, having younger clientele and, and really kind of being involved in that. And here you are, you know, almost double my age. Do you, like you said, you, you enjoy that father figure. Do you find it easy to relate to, to kids nowadays getting married? You know, I really do. I, I think that there are still some wonderful young people out there that uh, do appreciate my knowledge, my experience. And I love to share it. I, uh, <clears throat> I, I like to help people, you know, and I do older couples too. I did one last Saturday and they were both, you know, in their middle age, I'd say, um, you know, 40 ish. And, um, and it was the same relationship. It's like, you know, maybe I'll take a step back with them because they had been through this pro, you know, the process before. So, but I still love to relate to people. Um, it just, it's kind of in my nature to, to want to help. What, what is it like being down in Portland and, you know, we do the podcast up here and down there, you know, kind of the Northwest. What, what are your thoughts of kind of the wedding industry? Do you find that, that Portland's a pretty warm place to, to, you know, meet other vendors and things and network or what's it been like for you? I associate with a lot of vendors, also have built some great friendships through fellow vendors. Um, I have had very good experience. There's a couple of vendor groups that I go to the meetings here and uh, get to know people, network. Um, I've, I've had a great, res great re response with people accepting me and accepting them. They, uh, <clears throat> this, it, It's just overall, I, I'm not a fan of working in the town of Portland because it's just difficult to get around. I, I am actually a little bit south of Portland, so I, I like to cover Willamette Valley. I've got some local venues here that I work with really tightly. And I so I actually I have uh, a few venues here within the net within oh ten 10 miles or so that I, I give a discount. If uh, my couples are going to use that venue, I will give them a discount to, to help out. You said you're, you know, married, married 36 years, I believe you said, uh, what, uh, what was your wife's, uh, what did she think when, when you were going to do all this and, and go off and, and be a wedding DJ? Well, we've been married 38 years actually. And, uh, actually she was so excited for me not to play in bars anymore. She's a hundred percent for it. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, it's taxing on any relationship to be in that atmosphere. She's been a huge help. She's a little bit younger than me. So she's still working. She's a pharmacy technician. Um, she covers our insurance, which is why I was able to retire when I did. And, um, she is, uh, she's probably loved at the events more than I am because she's so helpful that, Last weekend, she was helping the bride bustle her gown, and she knew the bride was getting out of the car in the rain, so she grabbed an umbrella, met the bride at the car, and carried the umbrella while she came in the venue. Um, so it's it she, when she can help me with with we also have grandkids, so she's busy with that. And when she's not available, I have a niece that helps me, who's also he, a huge help. Um, takes care of our client just as well as I do. Uh, you said your wife likes to help you out uh, and she's still working. Talk about kind of just your family life. You said you have four kids, a bunch of grandkids. Um, seems like just a really fun, loving, busy family. It really is um, very involved in all of our kids still. They're all within, you know, a 20 mile radius of us. Uh, we had grandkids yesterday. I mean, it's almost a, a daily thing to be involved in some one of them at least um my son and i raced motorcycles for years he still does i retired from that a couple of years ago um big part of our lives uh we camp hunt fish we're just a, I, I guess just a normal family that enjoys each other but pretty outdoorsy especially for the pacific northwest absolutely yeah that's uh, that's us we like to get in the mountains and enjoy ourselves uh, talk about, you know, we talk about you, um, you know, or DJ MC talk about just kind of all the different services you offer and, you know, maybe what do you like about, you know, and you said now getting into officiating, what do you like about the different things that you offer and kind of walk me through what you do? 
Okay, well, um, I'll just go from the beginning. I, I will be contacted by a bride. I will make her a package offer. My my packages are all inclusive, so I don't itemize. I don't charge for a speaker. I don't charge for mileage. I, I take all that in consideration. I mean, if you're getting married on a Tuesday in January, it's going to be a lot less than a Saturday in June. So I adjust. And I, I think that's appealing to a lot of people. Um also, I, I I help coordinate. A lot of my clients either don't want or cannot afford a coordinator. So, I well, I can never take the place of a professional coordinator, but I do a lot. I'll help with the timeline, um, building a timeline. I've got a little bit of experience with that. So, I kind of know what works and what doesn't. I try to reach out to my fellow vendors beforehand, you know, phot photographers, videographers to help them. And we'll build a timeline together. We know it works for everyone. Um I I always include a rehearsal if I'm available. Sometimes I do weddings Thursday through Monday, so I'm not always available for the rehearsal. But if I am, I'm going to be there and help them. I, I've ran a lot of rehearsals because so many, you know, obviously it's their first time doing a wedding. So they need to pull on my experience to help them get through it. And they're always very appreciative of that. Um, then day of, I show up early, um, multiple sound systems. I have one wedding coming up this summer. I'm setting up three separate sound systems because there's ceremony, cocktail areas in a different area, and then reception dancings in a third area. So I'm always prepared. I have 100% of everything I need when I show up. I have table, I have I, I don't need them to have anything other than electricity. And even if that's an issue, I have generators. So um, I, I so when I show up, I'm going to be set up. They, they don't have to worry about a thing. I am going to run their timeline. I'm going to have all of their music will be loaded on a minimum of four devices. And that's just strictly so I can sleep at night, not worrying about music disappearing <clears throat> from their playlist. So, um, you know, a wedding's very important. You got to have it right the first time. There's no, no room for a do-over. Well, and I have to just think that, you know, with the background you have and, you know, that life on the road, just, you know, playing um, uh, different venues and setting up and breaking down. I mean, you know, when I shot news um, for video, it was a lot of, you know, you got to be used to different situations. I have to imagine with your background as well and being able to, you know, show up, make sure, you know, you got backups of backups and, you know, the extra equipment you need and everything. Um, just you're used to kind of troubleshooting, right? I mean, you have to when you're setting up at venues and playing and, you know, you're doing that every night again and again, right? Absolutely. I had a uh, situation last summer where my computer set in the sun and totally melted down. Unfortunately, um, had everything backed up. Uh, there was, I mean, the, the couple, nobody ever knew that happened except me, you know, and that's the way it should be. Um, I, it's and and one size does not fit all when it comes to sound systems. I'm not going to overkill a small room with a huge system, but I also am not going to undershoot when I'm doing a big outdoor event. I, they're going to have quality sound no matter what. Um, just two weeks ago, I dropped a couple thousand dollars on a new set of speakers. Um, I'm constantly upgrading. I, I want to make sure that if they hire me, they're getting the top quality, you know, that's that's out there it's state of the art no matter what do you enjoy the that kind of the master of ceremonies aspect as well do you enjoy really being able to kind of um you know dictate kind of the pace of the night and, and kind of you know be involved with the crowd and, and everything that's my actually probably one of my very favorite parts um i love working a crowd i in the majority of my bands i've been either a front guy or a second front guy so it's <laughs> it comes really natural and easy to me. Um, speaking in front of crowds is just a very comfort zone for myself. Um, I think that's why the efficient thing kind of appealed to me so much. And I had one couple last year that said, Hey, are you ordained? And I said, well, not yet. Let me go check. And the next day I was ordained and I did their wedding for them. And I, uh, I've gotten a ton of compliments for the ones I've done. So I, I'm going to continue with that. And I think I have four or five booked this year that I'm actually officiating. You said, um, you know, w when you uh, couples reach out and, you know, you can kind of help coordinate and, and build the timeline and stuff. I mean, where 
where did you kind of, you know, being a truck driver and the band, I mean, where did you kind of accrue the knowledge? Uh, you know, obviously you had four kids that got married and you know, you've been through it, but how did you just come into this and just feel as natural as you do kind of running everything? Well, I think that goes clear back to my, you know, days as a, in a wedding band, um, you know, cause you're, you're MC when you're, when you're a wedding band, you're also an MC and just, just paying attention to what's going on is so important. You know, you can build a timeline until the cows come home, but that timeline is not going to work. It's like it's like building a set list for music. You can build a set list, but that set list isn't going to work. You've got to be able to vary from that. You've, you've got to adjust on the fly. Um, you know, people start disappearing. You know, hey, let's get this this bouquet toss done before your guests are gone. You know, they're starting to fade. So you, you, you've got to be flexible. Um and it's just, I don't know, I, I think I just, I, I pay attention to what's going on. I think that's the biggest part of it. Yeah, I love, I just remember early on, um, you know, in my career working with certain planners and stuff. And yeah, you see these timelines that are like, you know, to the two minutes or to the three minute. And you're like, well, I don't know if it's going to be exactly, you know, nine seventeen when that thing's going to happen. You know what I mean? Well, that's exactly right. I want to hear uh, about your wedding. Uh, I know that that was some time ago, but I want you to, to kind of walk me through that. And, and what was that like? Well, my wedding was quite different from the weddings I do. We went to a justice of the peace. And then we also had a very small reception, my wife and I, <clears throat> just immediate family. So it was nothing like the, the weddings I do now. Um, you know, we, we got married very young. Uh, my wife's dad, unfortunately, was terminally ill. And so we moved up our wedding probably younger than we should have, but it has worked out very well for us. So I got, I have no regrets and I don't think she does either. Yeah. I mean, obviously you had, you know, kids and everything that, you know, so you, you were a little bit aware, but I mean, it is quite the, quite the shift from what weddings were even 15, 20 years ago, let alone, you know, 38 years. I mean, what, what, what's the, are you not surprised anymore? But I mean, what, like, what is, you know, it's just crazy nowadays how much bigger it is than even it was like when my parents are like, you know, even like my wife's older sister, I mean, it's really gotten huge the last, you know, few years. It, the trends have changed so very much from venues, you know, venues were usually a Grange hall, you know, or it's in, and so many of the weddings I did in the early years were potluck. You know, people brought a, their own dish, and that's just unheard of anymore. You know, everybody has a huge caterer. Um, you know, of course, photography. You always had Uncle Jim with his Instamatic taking pictures. You didn't have a huge photographer or a videographer. Um, it, it's it's so it's so awesome now the quality of memory these people are getting from their weddings. And again, that goes back to my service. I want to make sure my memory they have of me is also as awesome as the rest of their day. What was it like trying to kind of book early on, you know, to, to kind of do the transition? Like you said, you know, you had, your kids had friends that were getting married. Was it really just kind of referral and word of mouth or how did you really build, you know, build everything over the years? It really was just start all out 100% word of mouth, um, being involved in performing. Uh, you know, I, I met, had people come up and I would just discuss every time I heard someone was getting married, I'd say, hey, here's my number. I'm starting to build this thing. So I went from doing probably 10, you know, 10 a year to, to 20 a year up to, you know, I said, I'm 50 to 60 a year right now. And I think 2020 is going to break that record. I, I've got just that I'm turning down more than I can accept right now, as far as inquiries, which breaks my heart. It's hard to say no to any of them, but they, uh, I, I've just been really blessed. I, I think that, uh, I kind of found my niche with this and it, it works well. You know, is it hard kind of just with the setup and breakdown? I mean, even, even for video, you know, it's, it's definitely like a young person's game. I mean, is it, what's it like, you know, obviously you're schlepping and stuff in and out like everybody else, what's it like? And, and how do you kind of keep your spirits up? And, you know, I mean, wedding season's long. I mean, I, you know, it's long for anybody. Yeah. It, you know, the, the equipment thing, I, I, I guess I've just, it's just been a part of me my whole life. Um, you know, move, it, it's way easier than moving a whole band in. So I look at it that way. I, I do it in comparison. It, you know, it's, 
the equipment has gotten better quality for smaller stuff. I still have some really large stuff for outdoor venues that I use, um, but I've got it condensed to where I have really good quality out of smaller equipment. And, you know, my wife is a trooper. She's in great physical shape and she helps me a lot. So when we're doing a multiple setup or ceremony is over, I, I run over to, to reception. I have music playing as soon as guests are arriving after people clear the ceremony area, she's over there pulling down that system. And so that way we're not disturbing anybody during it as far as moving equipment, which to me is just a must. It's just too unprofessional to be waiting for somebody to bring another sound system over. It's, it needs to be set up way beforehand. It's funny. We had, um, I won't too many details, but we had a, we had a wedding this summer and there was, um, the DJ in his former life was, uh, had run an incredibly successful business. And so he had retired and just, you know, to be a wedding DJ, but you know, there was certainly no lack of funds at all. And I remember that we had, he had like one speaker and like the, you know, the, the table, whatever. And like, we're outside, you know, receptions outside toast and stuff. And then we're, we're going to get in and, and go to the first dance and stuff's inside. And it was like this 25 minute process of him like picking up and like moving everything. And you're like, like, if you know, this guy, you're like, this guy has more money than any of us. Like, why is there not, you know, you gotta be able to kind of keep that flow of everything going. You know what I mean? That's so important to me. I, I just, and that's, I tell every couple, I say, you know what, you're not going to be waiting for me. Yes. The, the whole day, my, my whole attitude is it is not about me. My focus is on their day. So I do not want to be a distraction in any way. And I'm not going to be overbearing as far as emceeing. You know, I am going to do what's needed and try to keep it exactly at that point and not, I'm not trying to entertain everyone and get attention to myself. I'm entertaining them to focus the attention on the bride and groom on their day. What kinds of uh, couples do you find are really attracted to you and you like to work with? Because it really is, you know, we talk a lot on the podcast. I mean, it really is a two-way street between, you know, finding the couples that, that you know, they want to work with you and then also you want to work with them. So, you know, who do you enjoy working with? Who do you attract? What kinds of brides and grooms? You know, I, I've been so blessed in the fact that I have not worked with one single couple that I just didn't really like. Um, you know, some more than others, but they are, I seem to be attractive to um, more of a couple that wants an outdoor wedding, um, maybe a barn venue. Um, those type of couples, they, they seem to be drawn to me a little bit more. I'm not necessarily country, um, but just that outdoorsy, more fun feeling. Um, again, I've, I've done, you know, weddings in downtown Portland at big hotels and I can pull it off. It's not my comfort zone. Um, I am, I'm way more laid back. Um, as far as just that fun outgoing atmosphere, I, I, I don't personally, I'm not a formal person in my normal life. So it's hard for me to be that structured formal person in my professional life. No, I mean, we certainly have our comfort zone. So I remember we had done a wedding a couple of years ago and they had gotten it. We had auctioned it off at like a charity auction. And so it was, you know, just a lot more high scale than, you know, and we can do, you know, like you, I mean, we can do you know, outdoor and hotel and whatever, but I remember just sitting there and I was like, this is really not like, I don't know what I'm doing here. You know, this is sometimes you just, you, you really kind of know your track and then you can go outside of it, but it certainly does feel good to kind of be in, you know, be in the, the good zone. Yeah. I, uh, I, I try to fit in. I, uh, if, if it's a pure country wedding, I'm going to show up my cowboy hat and Wranglers. If it's, you know, if it's more formal, I'll wear a suit and tie. I just, you know, I, I, that's one of my questions. I ask my couples, how formal are we? You know, I, I want to fit in. I've seen, and I, and I never talk bad about any specific other bender, but I've seen a lot of them show up in a dirty t-shirt and shorts, you know, at a wedding. And I just kind of look and think, well, we're at a wedding. You know, you probably ought to at least be clean, <laughs> let alone not dressed up. No, it's it's sort of we yeah we had a, a black tie one this summer, and luckily we were just kind of in like dress blacks. But I was like, oh, I was like that would have probably been good to know that it was like a like a really really black tie, like not even you know not even like semi formal. It was like definitely like tuxes and black ties. So yeah, let your let your vendors know. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, just uh, talk about the importance of, you know, really, and this is kind of, you know, you're selling yourself, but I mean, have I think people having a connection with their, you know, their DJ, I think it's really undervalued sometimes. I think the couples just are thinking like, okay, we need music or we need someone, you know, we got to make announcements or whatever. But, um, you know, you really like, we, you know, when uh, Dorothy and I, when we, you know, hired Alan, my friend at our wedding, you know, it was really important for us to really have someone that you're comfortable with and you know interacting with your family and interacting with you know some of your closest friends in the world to just talk about uh the importance for you to kind of make sure that everyone's comfortable that you're in there and and, in in that connection that you want to have and that the couple should have with their dj and mc absolutely um uh, i i can't tell you the number of people that say well i'm just going to have my cousin run his iPod off of a rented system or off a Bluetooth speaker. Um, that's probably going to work fine for some people, but they, they, again, as I said earlier, music is such a small part of what a wedding DJ does. Um, you, you're, you are master of ceremonies. I mean, everybody comes to me, you know, uh, even if they're doing their own catering, grandma comes up to me and says, Hey, the food's ready. You know, let's, let's, Let's invite the couple to start the buffet line. Let's, you know, and, and knowing their names, you know, I, I've had so many couples come up and say, why is it a wedding? And the DJ didn't know their names, didn't do this or, you know, uh, didn't personalize it and whatsoever. And that's, I want to be your friend. I, I don't want to be that guy that just says, here comes a couple, everybody stand up. You know, it's, it's, I want to introduce Mr. And Mrs. For the first time. I, it's, it's so, so important to have that personal connection. And I let, I do, you know, the in-person meetings to me are invaluable. You got, you have to do that to, to make that connection. I know a lot of people will do, um, you know, video chats with their couples and that's fine. And, and I, I get it. And I do that too. If they're, I have a couple coming in from uh, North Dakota this year. And so that's how we're communicating versus, you know, but I, it's to me, there's no substitution for that face to face over a cup of coffee to get to know somebody. Yeah. It really is tough nowadays, especially with, you know, just, uh, time and people and technology and stuff. It really is kind of that you got to strike that good balance between, you know, ease of whatever, but then also really feeling like, I mean, I always feel like I get, um, you know, a much better connection with, you know, with my couples, if we've met and whatever, than if you're kind of walking in and you've maybe seen a photo online or, you know, a little bit of a phone call or whatever, I mean, it, it might be easier, but you always do feel like you have that better connection, right? Absolutely. I, I, I just, there's no substitute for a face-to-face -face meeting, shaking a hand, you know, that's, uh, it's, it's just so important. You don't want to shake too many hands right now with coronavirus, but <laughs> carry your sanitizer if you can find it. <laughs> I know. As I said the other day online, I said that probably the only good thing about uh, this whole situation is uh, that Mr. OCD Reed over here doesn't have to shake too many hands anymore. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I was going to say with with the music thing too, and it it, it blows my mind how often still um, I'll go to a wedding and like the DJ is asking them. I mean, we're like day of wedding, like okay, now what song are you guys walking into, or what's going? I mean, just even today, like you know, we do you know, I mean, it's one thing, you know, years ago and you're doing small budget stuff and whatever, but even now I see DJs like, okay, what, now what are we doing here? Or what do you want to walk in? And I'm like, man, like it just blows my mind that we don't have that all ratcheted down ahead of time. That is unacceptable. Just absolutely not acceptable whatsoever. You, you got to be prepared, not to mention the stress that would put on me, you know, not knowing. Um, I, I, kind of a funny little story. I had a vendor friend of mine, his caterer, and he said that he was at a wedding and he said he wanted to go up and punch the DJ himself. Um, he said that the, the couple had paid $4,500 for this DJ to show up. And as soon as dinner was over, he took out a great big jar marked tips. And he said, the DJ made the statement, something to the order of uh, tips will get you your song you want. And I, I, to me, there's nothing more tacky than a tip jar at a wedding. Maybe a bartender, I get that. But for I, I, I normally, I mean, on occasion, I get tips. I would much rather get a nice review than a tip. But um, 
I, I, it's it's a classy event. No matter if it's a hillbilly wedding in the sticks, it still needs to have a certain amount of class to it. Well, and that's the thing too is is it's um, you always have to remember. You know, you go, go into different weddings. It's like even if it's not like your particular like style of wedding, it is the style of whoever is having the wedding, right? And I might walk in and be like, "Oh, this is kind of scary," but obviously, like no one is sitting there and saying like, "Well, I want to plan a crappy wedding." or I want this to look bad, or I want that to look bad. I mean, it's, you want everything to be, um, like you said, as classy as it can be for whatever that kind of situation is, you know? That's exactly right. I've done them in the middle of a cornfield, you know, that had just been harvested to, you know, to, to downtown Portland hotels. There's, it's just, there's a huge variety and you adapt but you still are professional. These couples, I don't care if they're paying $1,000 or $5,000. It's a lot of money to them. And that's, I want them at the end of the day, I want them to look back at my service and say, man, that was money well spent. And and that's, that's my complete goal. Yeah. And it, it, you certainly strike me as someone that, you know, you want, you really hold yourself to a high standard and you want to make sure that, you know, whatever you're doing is going to be, you know, to the perfection that they're hiring you for. Right. Absolutely. Everybody makes mistakes. Um, you know, be open and honest. I screwed up the name on a grand entrance last Saturday. And, uh, you know, it's when you want to crawl under the rock. But fortunately, it was a great crowd. They all giggled and corrected me and it was all good. But, you know, everybody makes mistakes. It doesn't I don't think it matters how long you're doing something. It uh, it, it just happens. But you know, you learn from it and I am going to triple check myself. I, and what was really stupid on my part is I was, it was a little bit of a tough name to pronounce for me. And I was rehearsing it under my breath through almost all of dinner just to make sure I got it right. And grand entrance came and my tongue went in a knot and I screwed it up. No, that happens. I, we had a efficient, I guess it was last summer that he, um, had said, uh, you know, the, the bride and groom. And I think he had said, uh, I can't remember if it was like, her name was Rihanna and he had, he had called it Rihanna or he had said it was like, it was really off. And I hadn't even realized it. Like I was doing the final edit, like final watch through of the thing. And I'm like, Oh my God, like, that's not, that's not her name, you know, like it's, you know, and it's one thing for the ceremony, whatever, but to have that be in the highlight. And luckily he had said it, like one other time. And so I had to like splice it in, you know, but it, but it worked out, but it's just one of those things where you're like, Oh crap. Like I, I'm glad I, I'm glad I caught that before I sent it over and they'd be like, what's going on here. Absolutely. How do you, um, how, my question for you, so, you know, and we talked about the technology thing and, and, you know, it's not for everybody and, and we get that. How do you, um, market how do you find new people now obviously getting out word of mouth and that helps is that mostly your stuff now do you do you find success you know, with facebook or how are, how are you advertising and finding new clients i would say 80 percent new clients come from facebook um the uh 20 percent are word of mouth probably and go to my website um i don't i just don't have a lot off of my website compared to facebook i'm i'm pretty active on the the bridal page is here locally and uh, I usually throw out a little ad once a month on them just to keep my name out there. Uh, so that's probably the majority of mine. I don't, I don't spend a lot of money on advertising. I'll do a bridal show or two a year. Um, unfortunately for me, I'm just seeing, cause I'm a single proprietor. So I'm just sitting there t telling my clients, sorry, I'm booked, sorry, I'm booked. So it's, it hasn't been very lucrative for me to do bridal shows. Yeah. Cause it would definitely seem like your personality would be something that, you know, would be effective for that. If that was a route you, you know, decided to go. Absolutely. You just, you, you gotta be nice to people. You know, I was, I was taught at a very early age to, you know, to treat people the way you would want to be treated. Service is everything. Service doesn't cost you a dime. So that's, that's where it's at is just giving good customer service. Yeah. I was, uh, when this time of year, I kind of archive, you know, we have our weddings and stuff. And then I, I have this tape machine going and it kind of archives everything for long storage. And, uh, one of the, I was posting something about it. One of my grooms was like, Oh, what, like, what is that? Like what's going And I said, Oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm archiving the wedding. And he thought, Oh, I thought, you know, we, cause I give them like a time, they got to have everything downloaded and stuff. And he's like, well, I thought, you know, we had to have it all by that time. I said, well, I still, like, I'm always going to, 
archive it. Like I'm going to, you know, I'm not like a monster. And he was like, wow, like you're a really cool guy. Thanks. <laughs> I was like, you know, that's probably worth doing all that stuff just to get, you know, and he's a pretty straight laced guy, but just, man, you're really cool, dude. Thanks for that. <laughs> I was like, you know, but like you said, it's that service that, you know, I do think people appreciate that, you know, even today and how crazy the world is and it's so quick moving and fast, but I do think people still respect, like you said, that, you know, a handshake and a smile and um you know just people doing good work absolutely that's one thing that has not been completely lost in this world is it just friendliness and the willing to connect with people uh so you know we're wrapping up here uh you know getting ready to say goodbye here soon how do you um can uh, what are you looking forward to in the future i know you said you you're you know the officiating thing and and i do think that's a great way for you to be you know even more involved and, and like you said to kind of bond with your couples where do you see the next couple years taken and where would you like to grow this uh, you know grow this business well, I uh, I am actually very satisfied the way it's going. Um, I have in the winter when weddings slowed down, I have been picking up some corporate events, um, which I really enjoy. So I would like to do more of that in the winter. Um, on occasion, I'll still fill in with a band on the winter. On somebody will need a, an old bass player. So I'll go show up and, and do a gig or two here and there. Um, as far as the this company of mine growing, um, I would love to find a second or third DJ that I could trust to do it exactly the way I want it done. Uh, so far it's been impossible. Um, I have one young man that I'm, I'm trying to groom at this point. And if, if he works out, then I would love to be able to add that. Um, but I just, it, it would take one bad review for me to just be devastated. I, and I, I don't ever want that to happen. So it would have to be somebody that I trained from the ground up and, that I trust completely. So that's a possibility. Um, not really counting on it. Um, I I'm satisfied, I guess at this point in my life, I'm satisfied with what's going on. I'm, I've got the right amount of events going, um, to where I can still take a weekend or two off, spend time with the family. And, uh, so I'm, I'm pretty satisfied. I know a lot of the younger guys in the right now are focusing on building these big companies and i respect that and i admire them for it but it's just not at, i'm not at that stage in my life yeah it's tough no and, and like you said finding someone that you can trust um i just posted today uh there was like a craigslist thing and someone up here was you know looking for someone that you know we get a lot of people that uh that are booking and then trying to um farm out that, you know, find a freelancer or whatever to film. And, uh, you know, I had posted, you know, make sure you, you know, you know, who you're, who you're actually is going to be their day of and all that, because like you said, it's, it's a lot of trust, to, you know, to hire someone for, you know, whether it's photo or video or DJ or whatever to kind of be there in your stead. And it, you really do have to be careful about, you know, hiring people or having someone go and represent you or, you know, you, if you're, especially if you're holding it to a high standard, you know, you want to make sure that everyone's taken care of. I, uh, one of the, one of the worst things in the world to me is, uh, several times I've been hit at the last minute, say by a couple <laughs> whose DJ has disappeared. They can't reach him. They, their wedding's in two weeks. Or actually, I did one next day. I just happened to be available, and I was able to step in, and it pulled off. Uh, that's unacceptable. Why would you even book a wedding if you're not planning on being there? You know, weddings are stressful enough without a vendor deciding the last minute that they're just not going to do it. And I, I filled in for one over the winter. That, um, And this is one of the reasons I'm so careful is there's a DJ fairly local here that had a couple of people working for her and one of them just disappeared on her so she she goes i have a, a birthday party tonight can you fill in and i i was able to do it it came off well but man she was panicked and it's just it's just not acceptable it's scary no it's definitely scary you got to be careful um well this has been uh, such a delight uh, i really have enjoyed you know talking to you and i'm glad we could kind of get this going and uh just you know getting everything online and it's always tough to get these scheduled but i really uh, appreciate your time if, if people want to learn more about you and your services and um you know plug where people can check out your information all right Reed. well i thank you first of all for having me this has been uh, a first time for me and a treat and it's uh, i really appreciate your time uh uh, on Facebook, events by K-Dub, and I also have a website, uh, 
eventsbykdub.com. Perfect. Uh, well, thank you again so much. It's, it's so nice to meet, you know, I, I have friends that come on here and, and we have, you know, other vendors and that maybe I do know or don't know. And it's so nice to get to meet new people, especially people down in Portland. And uh, yeah, I just really appreciate you reaching out and, and that we could get this scheduled. And uh, it's been fun. It's been fun chatting. And then I think you have an interesting story and it's been really good to kind of hear everything about it. All right. Thank you very much. You have a wonderful day. Uh, this has been another episode of Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. If you're like Kevin and you're interested in, in coming on the podcast, you can go to www.bestmadevideos.com slash podcast guest. And that's a nice, easy questionnaire that you can fill out and, and get this whole thing going. This has been another episode of Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. Check back next week for another wedding vendor interview. Thanks so much.